Hey, welcome to Who the Hell Knows What's Going On. I'm, I don't even know anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, our long national nightmare is still going or maybe not. I don't know. Check back later. If the theme of election night 2016 was what is happening? The theme of election night 2020 was what is happening? As of our taping, it's Wednesday morning and we still don't know the election results. You, the audience, probably know more about what's happening than I do. And I bet you think that makes you better than me, huh? Well, guess what? It does. In a number of states, we're still waiting for mail-in ballots to be counted. And much like my college boyfriend who had some very bizarre fetishes, this election can't finish until all the mail has been sorted. Still, that didn't stop the president from falsely declaring victory at about the same time America realized it had finished all the stress snacks. Frankly, we did win this election. This is a major fraud in our nation. We want the law to be used in a proper manner. So we'll be going to the U.S. Supreme Court. That's terrifying and exactly what experts have been predicting for months. Trump is going to try to steal this thing. Jesus Christ, no wonder so many stores have boarded up their windows. At 4 a.m. this morning, I summoned the strength to single-handedly pull all the boards off of Hudson News. Usually I save that strength for lifting a car off a baby, but I'm pissed. Even though our walking outbreak of a president acts like he has it in the bag, we really don't know what's going to happen yet. Will it be Trump? Will it be Biden? Will Joe Jorgensen ever not sound like a euphemism for masturbation? The answer to that last one is no. The president's threat to stop counting ballots wasn't the only example of voter suppression. The Postal Service is defying a judge's order to have a search for 300,000 missing mail-in ballots many of them in battleground states. Wait, wh what? You can just turn down a judge's order? Wow, I sure wish I'd known that when a judge gave me community service to coach a ragtag children's hockey team after I got my second DUI. I don't play hockey, we lost, and I got three more DUIs. Watching Trump proudly announce he's going to try to dismantle democracy was the most disgusting thing I saw last night, which, you know, is crazy because it beat out this. They are deciding things just all the time in there. Senator Mitch McConnell, majority leader now, gave a acceptance speech. Yes, that is gross, but he also found dozens of lost mail-in ballots. Like many of you, we were hoping that tonight's show would be a celebration of a huge victory, but we also feared that it would be a funeral for democracy. Instead, we're kind of in a horrifying middle, which sucks, I know. The middle is always a bad place to be, whether you're in a row of airplane seats or a human centipede. I've been both, simultaneously. Thanks a lot, Spirit Airlines. So much about the election is unknown right now, but there are some clear, exciting victories. Biden won in Arizona, which previously went to Trump, and the state also flipped a Senate seat blue with the election of former astronaut Mark Kelly. A man from space came down and saved us. That is literally the premise of Superman. Not only that, Democrats are projected to maintain their majority in the House, add much needed LGBTQ representation in state governments across the country, and Kanye West became the first rapper to be Joe Jorgensen. But most importantly of all, we had a lot of fun. Or at least someone did. This is why elections are fun. Strap in at home, brew extra coffee. This is real. These are votes, shellacked. The president's getting shellacked. That is how you get math. Suburbs is where you get your math. And a big dump of votes come in. We've always known if Joe Biden could rebuild the blue wall, forgive me, Donald Trump would pay for it. This is why it's exciting and fun. Man, the hamster running in John King's brain must be exhausted. That dude was so intense, he'd make Adderall anxious, which was in direct opposition to one of CNN's main sponsors, the meditation app Calm. That's right, Calm, the app that brings you serenity, peace, and the chance to rub one out to Matthew McConaughey reading a sleep story. Meanwhile, on MSNBC, we got to live the experience that was the Kornacki cam, which was like the Shiba Inu puppy cam, but without all the drama. We got to watch Steve Kornacki eating his pen, Steve checking his phone, Steve taking a bathroom break, and Steve still checking his phone. Steve, honey, what's on your phone that's so important? Aww. It's a smaller big board. While it remains to be seen exactly how this thing will go, one of the most disappointing parts of this election is that this should have been a landslide victory for Joe Biden. 
We're suffering through historic unemployment, human rights abuses on the border, white nationalist domestic terrorism, a worsening pandemic, and couch divots so deep you could lose a kid in, which I did. We knew it was very likely that we wouldn't have all the results on election night or even the day after. But in order to protect our democracy, we must keep fighting to make sure every vote is counted. It'll take time. We need to be patient. We need to breathe and we need to download calm. Use code full frontal like it's not going to get you any sort of discount, but it will be a secret code to the app developers that you use their tech to Joe Jorgensen to Matthew McConaughey. If you liked this video, hit subscribe and leave a pleasant comment below. Let's ride out the rest of this nightmare year together, okay? Okay? All right.